guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. First one is titled, Can trespass it is to tell me to fix my fence? then calls cops when I actually try to fix it. Part 1 A few years back there was a big windstorm that blew down my wood fence. Since I was renting at the time it was my landlord's responsibility to fix it. They called the contractors and set up a date to get it fixed. A week and a half go by with nothing getting fixed, which irritates me because now we cannot let our dogs out back without supervision. Enter my neighbor, who I shall call Ken, because I think it sounds like a male Karen. One morning, I get woken up by someone knocking on the sliding glass door outside my bedroom. I laugh and answer the door wearing absolutely nothing, because I assume my wife had accidentally locked herself outside. I answer the door, and it turns out my neighbor had walked through my backyard, over the down fence, and up to the rear entrance to my private bedroom. He's pissed and tells me how upset he is that my fence hasn't been fixed yet. I apologize and tell him that I too am upset that I cannot let my dogs out back in anymore. He calms down, and I put on some underwear so that I'm not exposing myself to all my neighbors. Really I think what calmed him down is me saying, yeah I'm pissed too, you should call my landlord and complain. Here is her number. I could see the anger leave his eyes as he realized that we had already done everything we could. Whatever he trespassed to tell me that the fence was blown down, because obviously I hadn't looked out back in two weeks. Part 2 the contractors show up shortly after since I called my landlord and explained what happened. Now the fence borders our properties and in order to fix the fence the contractors, they were probably just hired hands, but whatever, have to be able to access both sides of the fence. Ken freaks out and calls the cops because they were trespassing on his land in order to fix the fence. They show up and do nothing because it's ridiculous to expect someone to fix a fence while only having access to one side of it. Part 3 since the contractors needed a couple days to fix the fence, they parked their cars in front of my house. He calls the cops on them and tries to have them towed. Well, they just moved their cars at the end of the day so the cops couldn't do anything. But I guess he told them that a truck had been abandoned on the street and needs to be towed. At the end of the weekend, we go to use my wife's truck and realize there's a ticket on it. Ken had told them that our truck was illegally parked in front of my house. We got out of the ticket by explaining what happened, and the cops realizing that we didn't abandon our car in front of our house. After that all was quiet until he died a few years later, but I still think back to the day I was woken up and flashed my neighbors, because Ken just walked into my backyard like it was cool. Next one is titled, Entitled co-worker wanted my ticket to a concert so she can have fun with my friends, who she has never met. I bumped into someone I used to work with years ago, and she reminded me of this story. I think it fits this sub. We were working in a very well-known grocery store in our country and a new girl started. We'll call her Sue. At first, Sue was great, very good sense of humor, easy to get along with. You honestly couldn't tell that she was entitled. Okay, so the warning signs were there. In retrospect, she was our age, late teens slash early twenties. But whereas we couldn't afford to rent a whole house to ourselves, plus pay all of the bills, plus have a very active social life plus go clothes shopping every week on our entry-level wages. Her parents paid for all that for her, her wages were her allowance, because her parents were too mean and horrible to give her more money on top of everything else, she could. I had my break slash lunch with Sue one day, and she asked me was I up to anything fun this weekend. I said no, I'm working this weekend because I'd booked the next one off and I needed money. The Red Hot Chili Peppers were playing in our country, where to get a good music act here. And this was the early 2000s, so don't judge me too harshly, and they were my then partner's favorite band. My friends had all got tickets for the concert, and I had bought my partner their ticket as an early birthday present. We were all going together. Sue asked, would it be good? I said it would, we've all been friends for years. The support acts are brilliant, and we're supposed to get a good spell of weather. It was an outdoor concert. We're going to have a great time. Sue says that she might see if she can get tickets and convince her friends to go, if it will be that good. I point out that it's very late, just a week before the concert, and she might not be lucky. Cut to Thursday of next week. 
I'm clocking in for my shift as Sue is coming back from her lunch that day. She greets me with a big smile and says, just the person I was looking for. Can you work for me this weekend? I say no and remind her that I'm spending time with my partner for their birthday and traveling to this concert. Sue gets angry, but I'm going to the concert. I can't get the day off if I can't find cover. You're going to ruin my plans. Me, I was the person who told you about the concert. I had this weekend booked off for weeks. No, Sue, but I planned this. Nobody else will swap ships with me. You have to do it or I can't go. Me, did you get tickets? Sue, no, but if you work for me, I can have yours. Me, did your friends get tickets? Sue, no, they don't want to go, but I can go with your partner. Your friends will like me. I'm way better than you. Me, no, you're really not. Anyway, she tried to report me to the managers for not being a team player or something like that, and they basically told her that I had booked the weekend off so she should duck off. Apparently, she couldn't show up that weekend anyway, so they fired her. Not that it mattered. Mammy and Daddy were paying for everything anyway. Oh, and the concert was crap. It was the last date in a world tour, and everyone mimed to all their songs. But at least the weather was good. Next one is titled, Entitled Mother at GameStop Involving the Police and the Ending in Handcuffs. Cast. EP equals Entitled Parent. EK equals Entitled Kids. GM equals GameStop Manager. P equals police. I went to GameStop on Saturday to pick up chat with a friend and browse the merchandise. I also wanted to get an Xbox X and a PS4 along with some games, roughly spend more money there than I have ever before. I was there for about an hour or two having conversations with three people, one employee, my friend, and the manager. After a while I was talking with the employee about specifications between the consoles and the differences between the versions of the PS4 the manager stepped out for lunch. A short time later Epp and Eek walked in and rushed to the Switch section. While I was shifting through the games the employee went to ask them if they needed help finding anything. She asked some questions but I tuned them out while me and my friend talked about certain games. About 20 minutes later I knew what I was getting. The employee was getting everything together. A PS4 Pro, two controllers, PSVR and five games, an Xbox One X, an Elite controller, an Astro headset and four games. My friend was talking about a game he wanted and I said I'd get it for him as a favor for helping me out a few months ago. He thanked me, and that was it, almost. The Epidemic saw what was going on and heard me, and they came right over and the EP asked if I would help her and her children and buy them a game. I said, no thank you. She was looking at me like I was crazy and said you're buying him what he wants, why won't you buy my kid something? I told her that he's my friend and I'm giving him something back after he helped me out. She looked at everything on the counter and said, how old are you? You're too old to be playing all those games. You don't need them, you should give them to my kids. I said my age is irrelevant. People of any age can play video games and your children are too young to play the games I'm buying. They are rated M for mature and I'm not going to buy your children things they don't need. She then tells her kids to beg for the video games and I quickly turn to her and tell her that you're not a responsible adult and parent by teaching your kids to beg for free stuff. She continues to tell her kids as I am talking to my friend. Suddenly I'm grabbed by two children pulling on me and jumping begging me to get them something. I gently take their arms off me and keep them away, and the kids began crying and the mother said you just touched my children you pervert, I'm calling the police. A minute before she calls the police the manager comes back and sees me grabbing the kids and pushing them away and tells me to let go of those kids. I told him the whole story, but he wasn't believing it. He only saw a fragment of the confrontation. The manager talks to the woman, and she completely lies about what happened. She said that I tried to bribe her to touch her kids while nobody was looking, and to even attempt to bribe her with the games I was buying. I was laughing at the conversation that was being said and I said surely you can believe this. He was already on the phone with the cops. The employee was in the back of the building. Ten minutes later the cops arrive, and when I try to talk to one of them, she butts in to give her story first. So she tells the same story to the cops and the manager tells the same and the cops look at me and one of them puts me in handcuffs without hearing my side. I'm totally freaking out by how this has come down onto me being the bad guy based on a lie. I finally get to tell them my side of the story and even my friend backs me up but I was told her story is more believable than mine and I said you'll believe her without proof. They have security cameras in every corner of the building. Look at the footage and see for yourself. The look on her face was life shattering. She tried to say that she wasn't going to press charges, but they wanted to keep her here. 
The manager and one of the officers go look at the surveillance video and soon come out and take the cuffs off of me and they apologized. They ask you why she attempted to lie to them and ruin my life and reputation, and she replied with he's too old to be playing those games. He should give them to me and my kids. They asked me if I wanted press charges I said, no but I don't want her to get a slap in the wrist for this. They talked to her outside and after identifying her they found that she had a warrant for her arrest for something else. I was just flabbergasted with the whole situation. The manager tried to apologize for how he reacted to the situation and I just told him I wanted a copy of the footage. He asked why and I said ask the cops cause I will be making a complaint on how you presented yourself. A few moments later I get a copy and go home and didn't even want the games anymore. A few days later I found out that the store was closed down awaiting new staff members. I may have caused an issue with a retail manager, but he should have handled the situation more professionally. He should have checked the surveillance video in the beginning instead of calling the police. If he had done that then that woman wouldn't have gotten arrested and he wouldn't have been fired. I mainly feel bad for the children involved in this. They are being raised by a crazy woman who thinks begging and lying is the only way to get what you want in life. Next one is titled, Woman Steals Bus Seat from Child, First Time Posting Here. I'm Swedish so bear with me if there are any problems with spelling or grammar. I'm not even sure if this is entitled or just insane. I was on a bus the other day, and it was quite full. I got a seat at a group of four, where two seats point to two other seats. Some people had to stand up, including an older woman with her grandchild. The two girls who sat next to me got off at one of the stops, so the woman with the child walked up to take their spots. However, out of nowhere, this other woman runs up, pushes the child away, folds out a seat pad WTF sits down and just stares at the floor without saying a word. Me and the grandmother just stare at each other like WTF. I asked if they wanted my seat, but she said no thanks and walked away. So for the rest of the journey, about seven minutes, I sat facing this strange woman who selling cars is wild. For context, I was selling my truck on Facebook Marketplace, and it cracked its head gasket. I dropped the price from 5000 to 2000 as it's a roughly 3000 fix. For some reason I can't post the photos, so here is copy paste of the conversation I just had. EM is entitled man. Um, I can give you dollar one thousand. If I was working I could pay more but that's all I have. What public transport is there to get to you? Me, price is two thousand. Um, it's hard here with no work and transport. Me, if you can't come up with two thousand I can't sell it to you, sorry. Also, I can't afford it, is a stupid reason to ask for something half price. Stop pulling pity cards and look in your price range. Um, it's going to have a head gasket with head rebuilt. Get a quote and put it up. Stop calling people names or I will have you removed. You have car and if it's worth fixing, you would have done it. Arrogance thanking people stupid by marking dollar five thousand and crossing out. Actually, you don't belong here, get OFF. Me, it cracked its gasket after the ad was up. Not once did I call you names. I was selling it anyway so why would I bother fixing it? 2000 is nothing mate, I paid a lot more for it. And I'm not the one messaging people, hey I can't afford this, can I have it half price? I'd pay you more if I could. M, I would pay more money. I don't have. I am not asking for pity. Many buyers come to buy and sell. I am trying to buy and get to job, nothing more. I am sorry I upset you. If someone gives more money please accept it. If not. Please consider what I am asking for last one is titled. Entitled and gets mad because I'm not 18. This happened a couple of years ago and I've let it go, but every once in a while, I like to share it. Back in 2015, I, 21 female, then 16, had just gotten my driver's license. My uncle and aunt, both 50 at the time, wanted to give me their car as a gift since they no longer need it but was still in good condition. They got approval from my parents and they all went to AAA one day to put the car on my parents' insurance. I knew about none of this while it was happening, only that my parents went to the insurance for something. When my parents got back, I saw my aunt and uncle right behind them. My aunt got out of the car, and I opened the door to greet everyone, not knowing why they were there. Before I could say anything, she got in my face and screamed about me not being 18. Apparently, the insurance wouldn't put the car in my name because I was still a minor. She went on and on about how I need to grow up and kept making a face at me like she just ate a sour lemon, except with her eyeballs popped out of her head. As my uncle tried to explain the surprise, she kept sucking on that lemon and glared at me. 
until the day I turned 18, every family gathering, she would bring up about how I'm not 18 yet and glared at me. She would even text me about how great being an adult is. To this day, I think she expected me to turn 18 on her command. I don't know, everyone in the family thinks she's weird anyway. So it wasn't like anyone actually paid attention to her. Nobody even knows what the big deal was, I could still drive it. Yeah, I still got the car, she just didn't think I deserved it after that. Thanks for listening.